It's time to babble the fuck on. It's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. night at Comic Con, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Ralph Garman. Let's babble the fuck con. Because it's Comic Con. Or is it Comic Con? Spent too much time with Shatner today. Do it, you do yours. Con! No, Comic Con. Oh. Comic Con! <laughs> How's everybody doing? Do you have an exhausting Friday? Yeah. Thank God you all get to sit down except these poor motherfuckers in the back. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we're still standing. You're like the Bruce Springsteen of con attendees, man. They can't knock you down. Well, for, well done. God bless you people. Uh, we will do nothing tonight that warrants that ovation that you just gave us. I want you to know, <laughs> prepare to be disappointed. This is a historical show, man. This is the first time we've ever done it outside of uh, Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> Our first away game. It, it really is, and nowhere more appropriate than here, Ralph, because only down in San Diego at this time of year can you get uh, away with telling some of the jokes we will tell tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about references to like fucking Max Rebo, you know, yeah. that See? don't even go We're... all the way over here, but there's still a, a pocket or something. You yeah. can make Commissioner Gordon fucking Batmite jokes and people will understand it as opposed to like we do it up at the, the Lovitz. People, you make a Batmite fucking Commissioner Gordon joke. People are like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, here it plays kind of. Yeah. Or not. Where's uh? Where's your backstage pass? You're not wearing the pink triangle like I am. <laughs> Look at you, you're marked. They're coming for you yeah. next. <laughs> I'm wearing a pink triangle. Wait for Ray Fiennes to show up and take me to the showers. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him about the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, thanks for coming out. I mean, th here's the thing. There's so much you can do in this town during Comic-Con. And for you guys to take out uh, some time and spend it with us tonight means a lot. And uh, we really do appreciate it. <laughs> So thank you. And that is the last kind thing I will say all night, I promise. Because this is my first drink in three days, and I am fucking ready. <laughs> and as the ever sweet to his ever salty, I am super baked, so I'm ready to be pleasant. <laughs> However, we are at a bar, man. Is it possible to get a frou-frou drink? Can I get a pina colada, please? Yes. Light on the rum, thank you. Uh, sometimes I wonder why we're friends, I really do. <laughs> because I'm womanly. That hurts. That hurts I take when womanly I hear that. drinks, I got womanly boobs. You know the rum drink with the coconut and the milk? Less of the alcohol. <laughs> it's pathetic. At least I didn't order a Cosmo. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> An apple teeny. Could have been worse. All right, we're going to do some shout-outs tonight. I don't, you fuckers are all over the place, so I don't know if you're going to be here tonight or not, so I'm just going to pretend that you are and just power through, even if I don't hear you uh, scream out, okay? How about uh, Big Steve? Is Big Steve in the thing? Yeah, Big, Steve's, Big Steve is back there. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Hey, Ralph, a, yeah. I forgot. Our theme song, come on, man. Is James man. here as you know, well? Yeah, James I'm here, here, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give it up for DJ James, man. <laughs> I'm here. The shout-outs theme is new, so uh, forgive me, but I forgot we've got a brand new shout-out theme, and, and how, how remiss of me. Let's rock it. It's a shout-out with Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. Yeah, yeah, Get your cock out. Get your cock out. <laughs> 
Ralph and Kev, my name is Big Steve, and I will be attending the show on the 22nd in San Diego with my friend Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Are you Matt? Yeah, I'm Big Steve. Oh, yeah, look at him. Hey, man. Hey. Did you think it was an ironic nickname? <laughs> I didn't want to. Big fucking Steve, look how big he is. I did not want to assume. Dude, look, I had an organization come up to me and assume I was big, and I never want to do that to anybody else. Yeah, right? The airplanes, you and me, we're terrified of the sky. Thank you, sir, for the shot, by the way. What is I this? It. I'm assuming it's Jack. Oh, it sure is. Hold on a second. Just a little behind the ears. I took a cab here, so fuck the law. You're not getting me tonight, Johnny Law. You don't think to ask, like, where it came from? Somebody hands you an open beverage, and you're like, ah. I hope he roofied you, Ralph. No. That will teach you a lesson. If he did, he wasted a roofie, because I'll fuck you for nothing. I mean, I don't <laughs> I am a, I am a slut of the biggest kind. Because at Comic-Con, it's not gay. That's right. If you start <laughs> dividing a line between what's gay and what's not gay at Comic-Con, you would be here all day. Really. Totally, totally. Free pass. All these dudes at Comic-Con, it's like going to prison. It's not gay. It That's doesn't right. count. You do what you have to do to survive exactly. Comic-Con. Yeah. And you do what you have to do to come. And, you know. All right, where were we? Big Steve and Matt. Here we go. Yes. Why are you so eager to hear this? You wrote this. You know what it says. He's like, oh, I can't wait to hear what I said to you. You know what this is in here. All right. <laughs> He's like, I was drunk. Big Steve says, attending the 22nd show in San Diego with my friend Matt Weir from Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh. Go Cincinnati. Relax. Can't cheer a town. It's ridiculous. Matt just graduated from college and is now a licensed gay nurse. So get your cock out. <laughs> is, that a, is that a course they teach at your college? I mean, can the straight people go there and become gay nurses? Or? I'm not really a nurse or gay. You're not really a nurse or gay? That's what he calls me. Oh, okay. I think it's like, uh, like the James Bond license to kill. His is licensed gay nurse. I see. Uh, 69. Big Steve adds, I don't mean all Double O sixty nine. Okay, all right, I got it. <laughs> what, do you want a cookie? I just want a little acknowledgement. Steve adds, I don't mean all nurses are gay, just Matt and the gay ones. <laughs> Excellent point, Steve. If you could give him a shout-out as Sean Connery and tell him what he's in for, that would be tits. What? What happened? I'm yelling. Oh, yes, you are. They should call you Loud Steve instead of Big Steve. We're playing the drinking game, and you're going to do it. We're playing the drinking game? Yeah, we should all play the drinking game tonight. I wish we had. If you're uh, doing an impression, he's essentially going to drink. I wish we had brought the rules tonight because there are many of them. Do you really? Find a Xerox machine and hand them out to the kids, will you? If you give a shout out as Sean Connery and tell him what he's in for, that would be the tits. But listen, he's not really a nurse and he's not gay. How am I supposed to tell him what he's in for? I don't know what he's in for. He's gay and he's a nurse, all right. <laughs> Show Matt, you're a gay nurse, are you? Congratulations. You're able to do a lot of prostate exams. That'll turn you on, you gay nurse. <laughs> and when fellas get their appendectomies, you can shave their cocks, you gay nurse. <laughs> Penitent man. <laughs> Such a cheap, cheap way to get out, but I, I knew but it But excellent work. and appropriate at Comic-Con, <laughs> man. Right. How about Joel Sampson? Is he in the house, Joel Sampson? Yeah. Fucking Joel Sampson in the front row, motherfucker. Not only is Joel Sampson in the front row, he's a one-man cheering section no, for himself. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> he was like, he's yeah! Here. <laughs> he's here with Mike, Paul, and Lynn. Well, they didn't say shit, man. He was like, yeah! What? What happened? Lynn? He replaced Lynn. All right, yeah. who's, but who's with the you chick in said, this row? What? You're going to see what? You were all together? So he says your name, and you're the only one that cheers. Your friends are just like, oh, God. Oh, now we've been noticed. 
what is this fucking show? <laughs> they never been here. He they says right here, all Babylon virgins. Oh shit! Means, Boy, are you, oh thank you. Means they um, don't know. Welcome. That is uh, not a pina colada, by the way. I can tell you from here. I can tell. It's Anything fruity. with salt on the rim and is clear is not a pina colada. It's fruity. What that is a, te- a tequila sunrise. I'm guessing. All right, I'll have to give it a shot. Oh, you're gonna be nude by the end of the show if you drink that. <laughs> And I'm going to be balls deep inside you. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Because I'm all sorts of... Like... Comic-Con! Woo! <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mike Paul, and Lynn didn't show because she has taste, so this guy took her place. <laughs> Since this is San Diego Comic-Con, I was wondering what your all-time favorite comic book moments in the past have been, he asks. My personal favorite was an issue of Ultimates, where Hawkeye escapes his captors by killing them by flinging his fingernails at them. I didn't read that issue. That's sweet. I remember, in, uh, I remember reading in the Marvel Universe handbook, they described uh, you know, their powers and shit, and they talked about Bullseye, and they were like, anything in his hand. He's such a deadly marksman. Anything in his hands can be lethal. Yes. And they showed the dude holding a playing card, and that captured my imagination. Like, could you imagine you're just hanging out, and somebody was like, flip, cut your jugular. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> and he had a fucking playing card. You would never see that coming. No, man. Like, that's you know, a good that's, weapon. Yeah, yeah, so that frightened me. So I, that, that reminds me of that. But I wouldn't say that was my favorite moment. Hands down. Uh, I think my all-time favorite moment in comics is in uh, Daredevil Born Again. So a, a, a splash page, and it's right at, Karen Page is about to be killed, and it's suddenly, I don't know, I'm spoilers if you've never read the Born Again storyline, it's amazing. Karen Page is about to be uh, killed, she's about to fix, fix up with a big old heroin injection that's gonna kill her and shit. And all of a sudden, a billy club comes out of nowhere and strikes the dude who's about to attack her. And it's like Matt Murdock, who's been missing and assumed crazy and shit like that. There's a single page spread of him holding her, and she's just like crying full of joy. I know that I should be being, oh, is somebody beating the fuck out of somebody else? But this always fucking touched me. Whenever I think of comics, I think about that moment. It's so weird, because he wasn't even in costume. He was just dressed like himself. The shit we can only get away with here this weekend. <laughs> What's yours, dude? What's your all-time favorite comic book moment? Um, oh, I got so many, but I think it still has to be the Jim Aparo shot of Batman holding Robin's lifeless body in a time. Really? Yeah. You know, a death in the family where Jason Todd dies and, and Batman's holding the body. I thought that was still, that was, even though it was, he's back, I know. Fucking mm. comic books. Well, he was back, but as of the reboot... He's back. He's, he's in the room now. In the reboot? Yeah. Issue, uh, From issue one in of... In September, he comes back? Red Hood and Outlaws. It's him, uh, Arsenal, and uh, Starfire. But wait, in wait the minute, reboot... Wait a minute, wait Speedy is still Arsenal, even in the reboot? Yeah. How can that be if they're rebooting? Oh, I am, I am going to kick DC right in the balls. <laughs> And I, I fly the DC flag. I know you're more of a Marvel guy. I'm no, more a, I'm a DC guy all the way. Batman's my all-time favorite character. I've always been a DC guy, but they're just making it so hard to defend them. Mm. I mean, 52, I got it. Yes, it was very impressive. But not every fucking thing has to be an event. Jeff Johns doesn't have to write a 19,000-page epic about every event that happens. Right. I can tell you're very angry about this, Ralph. I am. I'll tell you what, man, uh, I, a lot of people have been upset about the reboot. I, I have, and I've been to saying, like, look, they're characters, they can do whatever they want. People got to remember there was a golden age, and everybody thought they knew all their characters and every story there was to be told. And then one day it flipped and became the Silver Age, and all yes. those golden age stories went away, right. and the Silver Age became prominent. And then one day that was flipped by the modern age, and all that Silver Age stuff went out the window. And we've been in the midst of the modern age for a good 20 year period at least now. Yeah. Now we're entering the digital age where apparently they're going to dial it back to one on everything and kind of reboot the universe. They're not uh, our characters, they're their characters, and if they want to do that with them, fine. But this bugs the shit out of me because... They, yeah, see, but... Well, because when everything's you When you feel personally about it, yes. then all of a sudden it's a of, problem. Of course, you know, when they came for my neighbor, I said nothing. One of those <laughs> things. <laughs> but this bugs me because you're telling me that, like, I, if they're rebooting from one, they can't be a fucking speedy or arsenal because Green Arrow's whole fucking adventure hasn't happened yet. 
Oh, those bastards. Wait, everyone, all of Batman's continuity is there? So issue one of Batman doesn't begin with like, my parents are fucking dead again. <laughs> no. Is it still Batman Incorporated where he's franchising? Dude, you should have your own podcast, really. We, we're, we should would leave and you should it. get up yeah, here yeah, and yeah, just yeah. talk comics. You've got all the inside information. All right, shut the fuck up now. <laughs> Thank you for that info. Though. No, you're you're very useful, but yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, no one listening to this cares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was very invested, but we got to put it on a show. Right. Unfortunately. We're gonna leave afterwards, and we'll smoke po pot and talk. Yeah. Pope? Did you say we'll smoke pope. pope? Smoke pope. I told you my first drink in four days. I'm a little uh, I'm a little bit lightweight. Um, yeah. So those are our favorite uh, comic book moments to answer your question. So. That was a long roundabout fucking <laughs> So to sum up, those were our I favorite just, moments. In case you want to cut that entire fucking question out of the podcast, I just wanted no, to... No, man, leave it in. That's Comic-Con gold. Uh, how about Amy and Jared? Are Amy and Jared in the house? This is amazing. I, people are showing up for You're the shout-outs. You're three shout for three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of the theme song. They're like, we got our cocks out. Back at the Lovitz, where you can park and get to the club easily, people don't fucking show up. These people worked hard to get here. You do show up. I know. Woo, Cincinnati. I know. Okay. Did you hear the chick? She goes, we love San Diego. <laughs> That's funny. Amy and Jared. Uh, this is from Amy. Welcome to my hometown of San Diego. <laughs> All right. We're all in favor of San Diego. You don't need to cheer it. I don't know if you know this, but she loves San Diego. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, I'll be at the show on the 22nd with my boyfriend, Jared. He introduced me to your show, and I've been hooked ever since, so this shout-out is for him. Oh, that's very sweet, Amy. We come here to celebrate our anniversary, but our anniversary isn't for our first date or our first kiss or even the first time we said I love you to one another. It was the first time we met, got plastered, and fucked. <laughs> Stand up, stand up. Stand up, you two. All right, all right, hey, now. Is show... it hot to fuck an Amish guy? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Show us how you did it. All right, easy. <laughs> Was it all in the same night? You met, got plastered, and fucked all in the same night? Oh, that's, that's spectacular. How long ago was this? How long? What uh, This is six years ago. Right on, man. Look at that. There's a fucking total wonderful advertisement for casual, unsafe sex with a stranger. <laughs> well, they went through the stages. Um, then they became friends with benefits. They fucked and then they became, let's be friends, but keep fucking. No, no. They fucked and then it became a horrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> then eventually something a little more serious happened, just like in the movie. Six years later, here we are celebrating the closest thing we have to an anniversary, hopefully laughing our asses off, and then maybe ending the night drunk and naked just for nostalgic purposes. Well, there's more purposes than that. <laughs> purposes of orgasm. That would should be your purposes. Yeah, yeah, to Can come. you please, in your Harrison Ford voice, tell Jared happy anniversary, and that if I'm drunk enough and he's lucky enough, he just might find out what Princess Leia really meant by into the garbage chute, flyboy. <laughs> Amy adds, yes, that would be a really nerdy reference to anal sex. This is the greatest weekend of my life. Um, um, Jared, I don't know. I think I've never done it. There's a nut. You want to like go there and put it in? Just take her in the back seat, the Millennium Falcon. Shitty dick. <laughs> wait, 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 Mr. Ford, while you have their attention, yeah, don't uh, forget to plug Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, um, Cowboys and Aliens. Is a movie that I'm going to see. With Daniel Craig and all the guys. Olivia Wilde, I can't remember all the children, but 
Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Oh, stop. Save it for the end. That's what my wife says. Is that, did that do it? Is he going to get it after, after that? Well, she has <laughs> he's, to get he's drunk. He's laughing. He's like, yeah. It's a two-stager. What's the next stage? Uh, she's got to get drunk enough. How many drinks have you had? I want to make sure this happens. Just one? Oh, come on, girlfriend. They'll always remember Comic-Con, man. Yeah. You know, Comic-Con's a horrible place where you hurt my hiney. <laughs> And our marriage almost Remember ended. that night when I gave up the garbage chute? <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to be a Star Wars joke. You took it seriously. 3PO, get us out of here! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, he's dying inside of her asshole. That's no moon. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> this is from Grant from Australia. Grant from Sydney, Australia. You in the house? Uh, you ruined my fucking perfect record, Yeah, Grant. we were on a streak, man. Yeah. Everyone hates you, Grant, if you're listening to this. He's from Sydney, Australia. Really quickly, I just wanted to mention it, that he wanted to give a shout-out. He's the first time out of Australia, apparently. He's here in San Diego for the Comic-Con. Right on. So he wanted to give a shout-out to his friends, dear friends back in Sydney who will be listening to this next week when the, it posts. And their names are Mitch Death and Courtney Print, and those are their real names. <laughs> Mitch Death. His name is Death. It's so weird because that's, death is his last name. Yes. And his parents were like, Mitch. <laughs> Takes the sting out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you meet the Grim Reaper and his name's Mitch, <laughs> you don't mind going. Totally. If, yeah. I, if my name was Death, I'd name my kid Horrible. <laughs> Just as a walking constant reminder, man. People are like, uh, you know, fucking Sally Jones, uh, Horrible Death. <laughs> Here. They went the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mitch. Mitch. Yeah. Sing along with Mitch, death. <laughs> all right, it's time for some emails from all around the world. James, hit me. Ain't no drag. Garmin's got an email bag. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. This comes from the UK. Kate in Devon in England says, I've been listening to HBO from the start and I've tried to convert as many people as possible to become Garmy Strong. Well, thank you, Kate. <laughs> GarmyStrong.com, by the way, is where you can buy your T-shirts for HBO and the Garmy. The latest candidate is my dad, Kate says. There's just one problem. Every time I try to play him some clips of the show, my iTunes seems to land on all the references to anal. Not hard to do with our show. <laughs> to every desperate plea from a guy for his girlfriend to give up the balloon knot and every random girl who's offering up their rusty bullet hole. <laughs> Amy, or Amy. Ion Cannon. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. as per Empire Strikes Back. Or Asteroid. <laughs> We had targets bigger than that. <laughs> what was that Womp Rats line? Was that? Womp Rats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could you please tell my dad, who's a big fan of Clerks and Sharktopus, well, he's got good taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put those together, Clerktopus. <laughs> Clerktopus. Oh, all right, for fuck, hit somebody. You got to do one more film that's got to be called Clerktopus. Damn you. Do it, do it. Take the line. Damn you, Clerktopus. <laughs> Half Clerk. Half octopus, all killer. <laughs> Just because he kills you doesn't mean he likes you. He's not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Could you tell my dad in your finest Al Pacino voice that Babylon isn't all about anal? Just 75%, she adds in a parenthesis. Ooh, ah. Oh. Kate's dad. Oh. 
your daughter, she likes it dirty. <laughs> oh, come on now. You gotta know, she's taking all her male suitors right in the hiney. Come on now. Ooh. <laughs> That's what she says when she takes it in the pooper. Ooh. I think she, she wanted you to convince her dad to listen to the show. <laughs> I think that's a commercial for I her can't. dad to kill himself. I man. can't because those two fuckers talk about cocks and butts all the time. Come on now. Oh, uh. <laughs> Come on with the sphincters. <laughs> Thank you, madam. I almost forgot how to do my impression. It's she like, loves San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was on stage and I forgot my line. Yeah. yeah. Ooh ah. <laughs> line. Ooh ah. She's like your Cyrano de Bergerac, dude. And I, I appreciate Caitlin writing in today. Caitlin gives me a little love, which I appreciate because you usually poo poo all over this, this little bit. Ralph, I was catching up on my podcast and I just want to tell you how awesome it is when you sing Edelweiss. <laughs> That's right, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't poo-poo it. I you encourage it. You poo and you poo. <laughs> I encourage it. I'm always happy to hear you do a round of Edelweiss. Do it here. I know it's your fucking sick dream to sing <laughs> Edelweiss at Comic-Con or something like that. <laughs> Caitlin writes, when I was little, that song was a standard on my dad's lullaby repertoire. Oh. Hearing you sing it brought back a lot of great memories. Olivia, which is the name of my little girl, is so lucky to have you as a dad, and I promise that hearing you sing from the Julie Andrews collection will keep her off the pole. <laughs> Maybe I don't want her off the pole. I have no problem with making a living on the pole. True. Yeah. You better start singing Edelweiss quick. Edelweiss, Edel... Were you fucking kidding me over there, singing along? <laughs> That's what happens, dude, when you go out on the road and sing a concert and shit. You sing part of the verse, and then the, and the audience, audience takes over. Yeah, yeah, like in a U2 song with like, oh, eh, like that shit. Okay. <laughs> Come up here and join me on stage. Let's sing it together, you and I. No, come on, yeah. You and me doing it together. We'll do it as a duet, mix things up a little bit. Come on, Maria Von Trapp. Make some play clothes out of curtains and sit your ass down and sing with me. What, what's your name? Sit? What's your name? What's your name? Ashley. Ashley. You ready? You ready to sing a little Edelweiss with me? I'm terrible. Well, <laughs> I'm not far off, so we're, we're a lovely team. You're better team. than me, right? No. <laughs> no. Somebody? Anybody? No. Right. That failed. Edelweiss, every morning you greet me, soft and white, clean and bright, you look happy to meet me. Ashley, everybody, Ashley. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Well done, well done. Oh, I want to sing badly and hug too, this young lady said. Hey guys, love the podcast. Adam no, no, we got to talk about what you just did. Never eject me from my fucking seat again. <laughs> Couldn't we have handled that backstage after the show? I don't know, man. I'm going to start picking co-hosts right in the middle of bits, <laughs> left and right. You, sir, come up here and talk about Liam Neeson's cock with me. I just thought you'd be more comfortable sitting and singing than you would standing. I apologize, Kevin. I had no idea. Broke my heart. Move on. <laughs> well, welcome to the last Hollywood Babylon. I hope you're all happy. <laughs> this is where it all falls apart. This is what happens when we go yeah. on the... Yeah. <laughs> 
David Banner here walks down the street alone. God, man. Yeah. Give that fucking penis a sandwich. <laughs> well done. We man. end like we began. Yes, and <laughs> finish with that. They were fine until they, sh until they played Comic-Con. And then yeah. the team broke up. It was that was horrible. like Martin and Lewis. Yeah. This comes from Adam Wells in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Guys, love the podcast. Listening to you two make fun of the idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger in a Western. We did do that last week. He's supposed to do a Western as his next film. Mm -hmm. Made me want to point out that this has already happened. Hal Needham directed a movie released in 1979 called The Villain. It stars Kirk Douglas, Anne Margaret, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold's character's name is Handsome Stranger. Yes, his actual character's name is Handsome Stranger. The movie also stars Paul Lynn as a Native American chief named Nervous Elk. <laughs> nervous Elk because they would fuck the elk. That's why they're nervous. Is that right? And it was Paul Lynn. How yeah. funny. Yeah. I wouldn't fuck an elk myself. <laughs> You have a Paul Lind impression? Yeah. Man, you are... Here's a scene where Schwarzenegger and Anne margaret are riding on a buckboard, and Schwarzenegger's doing his best cowboy impression. Please okay. enjoy. Faster, Hanson, because uh, they're going to get him. I can't go any faster than it wasn't already tired. Spectacular. You can almost hear the directors like, okay, Arnold here, the horses need to go faster, so you go, yeah, yeah, ah, ah. No, 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 it's yeah, yeah, ah, ah. Okay, we'll just go with that. Yeah, that'll work. Was right. that Ann Margaret? That was Ann Margaret next to him, yeah. Hey, Ann Margaret, you want to see Mike Pecker? Have my baby. <laughs> Joseph writes from Chile. You're not even going to grade that impression, dude. I, I so am. rarely step into a character. I, I stepped into Arnold. I imagine you'd have been like, eh, grade it, say something. You rode right over it. I, 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 was, I was. You didn't even know it was Arnold. Did I had you? no idea. Fuck. No. <laughs> I got to work on it. Fine, move on. Joseph from Chile writes. We got an email from Chile. Yeah. My wife is for... Stop cheering for Chile, too, Ashley. For God's sake, so far it's been Cincinnati, San Diego, and Chile now. I love to eat chili in San Diego. Woo! <laughs> Ralph and Kevin, my wife is four months pregnant. We found out last week she's carrying a boy. He'll be our second. I called my mom in the UK to give her the good news, and when she asked if we had thought of any names, I suggested a few names which were all meant by stony silence. Until I mentioned Ralph. She flat out told me, I'm not having a fucking Ralph in my family. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that, Kevin? Yeah, That's not funny. Because I sat there going, please don't tell me she's going to name this poor kid Ralph. I <laughs> got sensibility in paragraph two. She suggested I never mention the name again. <laughs> Love the show, guys. Yeah, well, fuck you, Joseph. <laughs> Sending me hurtful emails. Uh, uh, this one comes from Steve Nash, not the basketball player, he adds. I walked through my apartment the other day and it came upon my girlfriend watching Charmed. I typically ignore the show due to the fact it's a pile of ostrich shit. <laughs> anyway, while walking to the kitchen, I heard a familiar voice coming from the television. Upon inquiring upon this recognizable voice, who should I, whom should I see? None other than Ralph Garman. For the first time in my life, I sat to watch the show. Only wishing to get more Ralph in my life, you were on for a maximum of 30 seconds. <laughs> and then I remembered why this show was a heaping pile of ostrich shit, he adds. Are you serious? Steve were Nash. you in fucking Charmed? Well, last week we did a bit that Kevin called Garbage. <laughs> where we talked about my early struggling acting career. <laughs> Uh, I believe it was Doogie Howser last week. Yeah, it was you in a, in a gym, a, a locker What's room. What's gymnasium? That was the gay porn I did. <laughs> yeah. This was, was close. It was you in a locker room. With some other EMTs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving yeah. somebody some shit. Right. In Charmed, I, and she, you know, he's, he's uh, exaggerating 30 seconds. I had a much larger role. I had a, a recurring role on Charmed. 
where I played the DJ at the P3. For you Charmed fans, you probably remember the P3. P3 was the nightclub that the three teenage witches owned. I don't know why they were teenage witch club owners, but it, P3 stood for their names, because their names all start with P. It was uh, Prudence and uh, Pariah and Parsnip. I never watched the fucking show. I have no idea. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just move along. Did you, who were you barking at? <laughs> who, me? You, what were the names again? Prudence. Prue. 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 Page. Phoebe. Piper. There you go. Prue, that would be four Phoebe, P's. Phoebe, Page, and Piper. One of them left, right? Right. Th then Rose McGowan showed up. Yeah. You got that out of your system? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but thank you for your help. Thank you for your assistance. Yes. You could tell it was bugging him. So it's, uh, it's time for a segment we call Garbage. Thanks to Kevin. Uh, with, and someone sent in a jingle. They were so enthused with the, uh, the idea of garbage. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Uh, I think James, uh, James has it. I hope he does. Garbage! Yep. That's what that is. That is my, uh, that's my acting career reduced to a joke. That's what that is. I don't know, but it enters with kind of some sort of for, uh, kind of magnificence, though, yeah. you know? Yeah, however, it still ends with garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of cut, undercut at the end there. So here's, uh, I think, the episode that Steve Nash was referring to where I bring out the, uh, still to this day, wildly popular band Dishwalla on stage. <laughs> but you'll notice I did so well in the first episode, I, and I put the second episode right after that, I get a second chance where they really kind of double my role, really. They expand the role twofold, where I get to bring out the still, to this day, wildly popular band, The Cranberries. <laughs> so I hope you'll enjoy this episode of Garbage, starring me, Ralph Garman, on Charmed. Yeah. Click, click, click the... Click the... Oh, did you... Press that. Yeah. There you go. All right, one of these. Get that. How about that one? How about the blue one? Or not. Maybe not. See what happens when you play in another team stadium? Yeah. You gotta play the field though, man. Yep. So, uh, trust me, it was hilarious. Are we seriously not gonna see it? I, I, I don't think so. Do you? Bummer. I'll pull it up on my phone. You keep doing the show. I'm gonna watch it on YouTube. I was kind of into it, man. I think we're jammed up. Yeah, it jammed up for a minute. Hang yeah. on, uh, just maybe vamp? Vamp. There we go. I, Wait, did you work with the girls? Did you interact I did, with the girls? I did. I worked with, uh, let's see, I, 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 I worked before Rose McGowan came along. So it was uh, Shannon Doherty right. and that other girl, Melissa Milano, and then the third girl, Holly Combs, right? Holly Combs? That yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Holly was the only person who would talk to me. Shannon Doherty did? No, no. <laughs> oh, my God, we both worked with Shannon Doherty. Yeah. She was probably nicer to you than she was to me. Just a touch. Hey, we're getting close. We've got a giant white screen to look at. It's thinking. Yeah, we may have to move on. I don't know if we can wait any longer, but... Uh, oh, there's a lot of video tonight. <laughs> take, that, uh, take that penis away from that sandwich. Yes. All right, let's move on. Every week we say goodbye to some people in show business that uh, we all know and love. In this particular case, you, uh, none of you here probably know him or love him, but we have a lot of Australian listeners who sent in this particular Tinseltown stiff this week, and so we honor him with Tinseltown stiffs. And now another edition of Tinseltown. 
They will be missed. They will indeed. His name was David Nagumbujara. <laughs> David Nagumbujara was Australia's most popular indigenous actor. He was an aborigine. Okay. Here's a picture of him in Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. He looks an awful lot like Batman riding a shark. There we oh, go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He did a ton of movies. He did uh, Rabbit Proof Fence, which is a huge hit in Australia, uh, Black and White, Ned Kelly, Crocodile Dundee in L.A., as we mentioned, uh, Kangaroo Jack. He was found at the age of 44 in a park near Fremantle, near Perth, and then uh, he passed away. Police oh. said they are not looking into it because his death was not suspicious. He was found in a park <laughs> at 44. They didn't say his death was sus suspicious, but they were like, it might have been fun. Because you're in the park, man. Maybe you just had too much fun. The parents are always telling you, slow down, pace yourself. Maybe this guy he didn't. He slowed down too much? Yeah, this guy went crazy. Maybe he went croak about. Croak about. <laughs> too soon? You might want to. File that. 44 years old. Here is uh, the second pick of uh, David in Australia, the most recent film with Hugh Jackman. 44! Yeah, that, that looks... Holy looks fuck! Much older than 44. What are the Aborigines doing out there? They make you look like that at 44. Age them quick, hard living. I'm going to put him on my fridge. So when I feel bad about myself, I go, well, still look at him at 44. <laughs> I, feel I look better than that. No doubt. One of our favorite new segments is a little something we like to call shit that should not be. We've done a bunch of them. We did uh, Back to the Future 3, where that kid pointed to his penis. That was yes. weird. Uh, Jedi, where Harrison Ford grabbed Carrie, Carrie Fisher's boob. Uh, the Harry Potter map, where people are fucking. Teen Wolf, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Bella Teen Wolf, you might have seen a dick. Yeah. Raiders uh, of the Lost Ark was Bella, Bella eats, eats the, the bug. bug. Yeah. Last Samurai was Tom Cruise's horse kicked somebody in the balls. Right. Well, people have been sending this in over and over and over again, and I'm always like, well, everyone knows about this one. Everybody has seen this one. But we are at Comic-Con, and I thought if we were going to show it... Yes. Well, first of all, we'd need the video to work, wouldn't we? Uh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I can't believe you're getting ready for this. We don't even know if we've got it. Oh. Here we go. No. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. Maybe. <laughs> Bam, there it is. Stormtrooper hitting his head in the doorway. Never gets old. <laughs> A, a fuck-up that became so famous that Lucas, when he went back and redid the films, put a sound effect in when the guy hits a his clunk? head. A clunk? Yeah, puts a clunk in. A sound effect when the stormtrooper hits his head on the... Uh, I would have thrown in a line, like, aren't you a little tall for a stormtrooper? <laughs> He's like, yes, that's why I just hit the door. New releases this weekend. Two new movies uh, in theaters everywhere. Friends with Benefits. After you guys. Have Star you seen it? Uh, no. Do you know what the premise is? Let me think. I'm thinking Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis are real, two really smoking hot attractive people who apparently can't find love. Right. And so they're friends and they decide to have sex with no emotional ties whatsoever. That's, oh. I see I figured that out from the trailer or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. And right. then uh, you know, chaos ensues and, and emotions flare up and they fall in love. Fair enough. I just, there's a running commentary. Are you, you're just literally doing commentary on the bits, man. Every time we talk, she's like, they just said friends with benefits. <laughs> Trying to avoid all the cliches of romantic Hollywood movies, this plot line says. Yes. Dylan and Jamie soon discover that by adding the act of sex to their friendship, it does lead to complications. The heck you say. So in, in trying to avoid the cliche, Ralph, they ran smack dab into the middle of it and sucked its huge fucking cock. Yeah. <laughs> right on, man. Well, I'm sure someone's going to enjoy that. They should have avoided Ashton Kutcher, Natalie Portman movies is what they should have done. Uh, it seems like I just saw this movie. About six months ago. Yeah. And Captain America, the first Avenger also. Yes! Yes! 
Who saw it? How many people here saw it? Wow, that's not the rest of you haven't gone yet. Wow. Um, I, it was. I thought it was totally elegant. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah. It's very well done. Uh, although there, there's one section, I'm certainly not being critical of it, that I was not expecting at all. The buy war bonds section. Yeah. Yeah. That was fucking crazy, wasn't it? But like, I thought it was genius. You liked it? I loved I'm it. I'm not saying I didn't like it, but all of a sudden you're watching like Captain America. Spoilers, but. You're watching Captain America becomes the he gets the serum and it becomes, becomes the super soldier. Chris Evans. He goes from being CG Chris Evans to like, look at my pecs. By Chris the way, Evans. how amazing is that special effect where they make Chris Evans do a scrawny little dude? It's cool, but like he was bitching about wanting to be bigger, and I was like, I wish they would do that to me. Just <laughs> make me smaller, you know? But um and so after he gets buff and he becomes big and they, you know, he can become Captain America. Instead, he winds up going out on the road to sell war bonds for, yes. like they say, 200 performances. And it's cool. They put him in the, you know... The a classic Cap, Cap Classic uniform. Captain America kind of, you know, outfit you would see roaming the, uh, the, you know, the aisles here, I guess. Uh, but at the same time, it goes on for a few minutes, and you're just like, what What happened? They, take, they step aside to do a musical, like a Busby Berkeley, you saw it. Yeah. That was the only thing I thought was weird. You thought it was cool? Though? I thought it was great. Why? Because I thought it made sense of why he would put that costume on when he went into battle. Right. I thought if he just came out like a super soldier, why wouldn't they just gear him up with the traditional standard helmet and the, and the, the suit and everything and put him out in the battle? Yeah. Why would he wear that blue and red, white, and blue costume? This way, he had already established himself as an icon, and when he went into battle, that's why he said, give me the specially painted helmet and all that kind of stuff. All right, fair enough. I'll accept that, man. Yeah. I thought it was smart on their part to explain away why this guy wears bright day glow colors into battle. Fair enough. Where they could easily find you to shoot at you. But why does everything have to be explained? Can't they be like, he put on the suit just because it's fucking badass, you know? I don't need an explanation, like a five-minute, like, all this shit happened, his mom fucking died, uh, a seal exploded on the beach, Jesus showed up, and then that's why he wears the outfit, you know? But I just thought put it made on him, the outfit. I thought it the made him even colors. more eager to be in the action, in the front lines, because he felt... Because he was being he felt marginalized. Because he became a clown, yeah. He became right, sort right. of a clown for their amusement, Henry. What am I, a clown for your amusement? That's what he was feeling. Totally, I feel you. But I dug it. The movie then kind of... I, uh, I loved it. I mean, I think I, I, think I liked it more than you did. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Avengers yeah, the Avengers. Uh, That's it. I mean, trailer, they yeah. end insanely well. The movie ends. you got to sit through all the credits. If you're going to see it, make sure you sit through all the credits. And, you know, with all the Marvel movies, they put a little coda at the end. And the, the Thor coda, I wasn't too wild about. It was the first one where I was like, blah. But this one was fucking astounding. It was the Avengers uh, teaser. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, you get to see footage from the Avengers movie. And it is, it, you just sit there looking at it. And you're not even thinking or moving or touching anything. And suddenly, you're like, and you just fucking flood, dude. You literally cum yourself. No, yes. no. Yeah. I, I wasted generations of children watching that trailer, man. Inadvertently, it was just like, <laughs> because you see them together. At one point, the last shot, you see uh, Thor standing there in the midst of the, them at, all the com at the conference table. All and Cap's assembled. got a new uniform. He's got like a new yes. sparkly uniform. I was yeah. like, yes, I'm not even a huge Marvel guy. And I saw that, I was like, someone got it right. <laughs> Credits. Totally. I did. I went looking for my wife. But how great is it in the movie? How clever was it to have them, to have Howard Stark be one of the guys in the film who is like the technological genius, and then in the next film, he's going to be working with Howard's kid, basically, Tony Stark, as Robert Downey Jr. is going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. a nice little tie-in that's going to be for them. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. it's comic books. They have that continuity thing. They love to do that, interconnect everything. I know, but I thought it was very clever for Captain America to, to tie that in. I yeah. thought the performances were good. I thought Hugo Weaving was great. As, uh, I Red thought Skull. Chris Evans, who... Chris Evans was great. I, thought, I think uh, most people were kind of worried that when he was cast as Captain America, because they know him as the Human Torch. And the Human Torch is always quippy and fucking one line. Suck my dick, Ben Grimm, and shit like that. <laughs> And I, think, I don't remember that line. No, it was the, the best line in, in, the, in, the, in the second Fantastic Four. Right. Um, but, but then, uh, so going into this, you expect he'll be kind of that as well. But 
played it completely differently. It was very earnest, very uh, sincere. There's a moment in the movie I thought was really beautiful where uh, the doctor's just like, why, you want to go over to Germany to kill a bunch of Nazis, I take it. And he goes, no, sir, I don't want to kill anybody. I just don't like bullies. Yeah. And you're like, oh, he, you nail that line, you nail that character, you nail the rest. So he, gets it. he nailed it as Steve Rogers, and yeah. his cap was really earnest. I thought he did a great fucking job. Me man. too. Yeah. 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 He did. He did a really nice job. Moving on with the HBO headlines, Rebecca Black is back in the news this week. You may remember her from Friending, Friending. She's got a brand new single that dropped this week called My Moment, My Moment. <laughs> this song is about all the haters who dumped on the 14-year-old singer when she became an overnight sensation. Oh, that's sweet. She wrote a song about me. There's a new video, a new song. Apparently, she's uh, putting out an EP because she's not talented enough to sing an entire album's worth of songs. And uh, she's putting it out herself without the help of a record label. Indie artist, man. Indie artist. She is, she is indie. She's that. grassroots. I dig that. I brought in a copy of the video, a little of her in the video. I know. I look. I, I'm hoping it'll work. fairness, though, whoever is managing her did spend a lot of time and expense to prove that she can't dance either. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of catchy. <laughs> this is my moment. It's our moment, Ralph. This is our... No? No. <laughs> no. Com. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not bad don't. enough to be interesting anymore. That's her problem. She's mediocre now, and mediocre gets ignored, so... I, thought you, I, I never understood why people were so pissed off at that first song. I thought it was singable and shit. It was fucking shit. hideous, that's why. Yeah, but it's why. no, it was honestly no worse than like most fucking pop songs. She does sing about cereal. As a fat man, I appreciated her singing about cereal, all right? She was in your wheelhouse when I think about it. was the first fucking piece of music I heard in the radio yeah. in years where I was like, rolled a tear, because I'm like, oh. I hear you, man. You gotta eat, you gotta figure out where to sit. Gotta get a bowl. <laughs> gotta get a bowl of Front peanut butter back. Captain Crunch. Not fucking sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I had no problem with her. I'm glad she's keeping going. She's like, fuck all you people that keep saying I'm talentless. Stop supporting the bad. I have to. I'm talentless. I've been doing it nearly 20 years, man. <laughs> Why can't she enjoy a little fucking time in the sun? Easy there, easy. Did you hear that? Oh! <laughs> I expected somebody to come running in with dynamite strapped to their chest. <laughs> that made me think about the panel I hosted today. We did uh, 30 Minutes or Less, the new comedy with Jesse Eisenberg and Aziz Ansari. And the premise is two guys uh, need money, so they, two bad guys, so they pick some poor kid who's a pizza delivery guy and they strap a bomb to his chest and say, if you don't go and rob a bank, we're going to blow you up. That's the comic premise. And... Um, I know, it doesn't sound funny inherently, <laughs> but the movie is actually very funny. But I did a panel with Sony, uh, all of their films today. I don't know if you can tell I'm walking on clouds or not, but... Oh, I Emily... St one more time. Emma Stone. Did you, just, did you just call her Emily? That's my pet name for her when we're in bed. <laughs> but I, I met Emma Stone today, that's what I'm saying. And, and people always write in and they say, you guys talk so much, or you guys, Ralph always talks so much about Emma Stone, Emma Stone, Emma Stone. Does she know? Has friends told her? Is she aware of what's going on? Well, I need, I'm here to tell you that she absolutely does not know who I am. <laughs> no clue. Had no idea. Uh, Mark Webb, however, who directed The Amazing Spider-Man, he is a, a big fan of uh, the radio show I do in Los Angeles, the morning radio. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I said, Great. Another, another doughy-bearded director. That's just what I need. I already got one of those. I need Emma Stone. I need some... Mm. <laughs> zip. I got zip. Oh, I'll, if you really want it, I'll give you some... Mm. 
I'll do that for you. Kristen Stewart got into an accident this week. Oh, stop it. How dare you, sirs? You people are fucking hateful. The Twilight star was cruising around in a Mini Cooper. Oh, wouldn't you just fucking know it? When a woman in a Mercedes smashed into her backside. It's not the first time, by the way, someone's <laughs> smashed into her backside. According to witnesses, the woman driving the Mercedes seemed very apologetic, while, of course, Kristen, true to form, registered no emotion on her face whatsoever. <laughs> I wrote that in one in the dressing room. I felt pretty good about that. <laughs> oh, big problems on the uh, set of Cash Cab. You guys are Cash Cab fans? What is it? You don't know Cash Cab? Oh Hence, God. what is it? <laughs> I guess that should have been a giveaway, yeah. huh? Cash Cab is a game show where there's a guy <laughs> in a cab and he drives around New York and you hop in the back of his cab and he says, you're on a game show. And they've got cameras set up and everything and lights in the, in the ceiling and stuff. And if you can answer, I think, I don't know, three or five trivia questions, whatever it is, if you get it right, he'll take you wherever you want to go free of charge and you also earn money. But if you, if you get them incorrectly, he just pulls over and drops you off wherever you are when you, when you lose. <laughs> That's Cash Cab. That's awesome. It's awesome. It's the greatest game ever because people don't know they're on a game show and then suddenly they're on it. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Anyway, Cash Cab was filming in Canada apparently this week when uh, the person driving the cab back to the storage facility after they filmed the show hit a 61-year-old man and killed him. Uh, uh. That is sad. <laughs> he will be missed. <laughs> That is sad, but it gave birth to a brand new game show called Crash Cab. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They didn't really do that. But that would be a great game. Answer the trivia question right or we run you over. That would be, now that would be a game I would watch. Welcome to Cash Hearse. Come on. A, a, a hearse is where you dead people ride. I think, so. I think they know. I think... That bad? I don't think you're helping your cause. I don't don't care. In the Celebrity Sick Bay this week, Grey's Anatomy star Eric Dane has entered into rehab. McSteamy? McSteamy. How did you know that? I had to read McSteamy. I used to watch that show. He was McSteamy. You and your pina coladas and your (laughs) McSteamy? uh, Can I get you some medication for your yeast infection? (laughs) I'm in touch with my feminine side. Say what you will. (laughs) Anyway, McSteamy went into rehab for addiction to painkillers. Apparently, he was so sexy it hurt. No, No, he had a sports injury, he claims. And uh, he uh, got addicted to painkillers, and now he's in rehab, and they hope he'll be back to work soon. Uh, Yeah, that's a bummer, man. They they can't do without McSteamy, because then all they're left with is McDreamy. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I auditioned for McJizzy. I don't know if you... <laughs> that was a role they wrote just for me. Where and I would just were... walk the hallways of the hospital just uh, shooting ropey strands of jism on patients. <laughs> it was not a character they chose to keep. No. I like to think it wasn't my performance as much as it was just a uh, mistake in writing. I thought they pulled your character out because there was a legal process thing. Uh, they wanted to call you Spider-Man because you're slinging webs left and right. And they were like, that name's already taken. Yeah. And so they wrote your character out. Now that the video's working again, can we show me Uncharmed? <laughs> yeah, man, I do want to see that. Can we revisit that bit? James, is that possible? James left. I guess he did. I don't I'm blame here. Him. Oh, there you go. I'm loading it up. Is that possible? Because now it seems like it's working again. It I seems just, like it's working. It just we'll dawned on me that maybe we can show the Charmed bit that we didn't get to. Or the clip is so bad... It, it won't be played on it. Play electronics. It. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you, sir? Here we go. Let's see. Hey! Yeah. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dishwalla. Yeah, there I am. That was a Dishwalla, but wait, which one they expanded my role? See that? He winked at you. Folks, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce. And a one-night-only benefit for the Animal Rights Fund, the Cranberries. Yeah! See? 
It could have been just the cranberries, but no, they added that whole animal fund chunk for me. Did you have to let that linger? <laughs> Don't be a zombie. <laughs> I think we're out. We're I, here am, I got nothing. I had one. That was it. While we're talking about music news, R. Kelly apparently won't be singing for a while. He had uh, severe pain in his throat. They rushed him to the hospital. It turned out he had an abscess on his tonsil, and they had to perform emergency surgery on his throat. Deep throat, yeah. He was like, I believe my throat's dry. <laughs> Doctors say there's no way of knowing when he'll... It was good. What do you want? I got a laugh. What more? What do you want from me? I, I paused. I let you get your laugh, and then I kept going. I just wanted you to tell me it was good. It was great. <laughs> Here's a light bulb. Thanks. That's your gift for the funny joke. Okay. <laughs> Doctors say there's no way of knowing when he'll sing again, but they uh, requested of R. Kelly that he stop peeing on underage girls. <laughs> That's nothing to do with his illness. They just think it's fucked up. Lindsay Lohan in the news. Oh, we got a Lindsay Lohan theme, I think. We, we debuted it last week. Can we have that, James? Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? Yeah. Lindsay's in the news this week. She's out of jail. And by jail, I mean her multi-million dollar beachfront condo. And she's working again. She did a photo shoot for a photographer named Tyler Shields. I brought you a couple pictures of her photo shoot. This is the first one here. No? No, that's the 44-year-old aborigine who died. There we go. This is, uh, this is uh, Lindsay Lohan's... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's her prom photo. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's Lindsay's date grabbing her tit. Uh, she also shot this shot, which people are saying is disturbing because she's holding a bloody knife. Nice. Yeah, she's holding a bloody knife. And the guy on the left-hand side, the corpse, is playing her career. <laughs> That's right after she stabbed it to death. She also had to appear in court this week because the judge of her case, Judge Stephanie Sautner, said she can't understand why out of 60 days of community service that she was sentenced to, so far, Lindsay has only completed four days of community service. The judge said, uh, I will give you no extra time to complete this. You must do it in the allotted time. I will hear no excuses, she added, especially I was on the set of that John Gotti movie. And that's not a joke. That's actually what she said. Uh, Lindsay is also required to enter counseling, but Lindsay says because her Screen Actors Guild insurance has run out, she can't get her head fixed. It must be amazing to date her, man. Because nothing you do will ever be as bad as everything she does every day. You get away with murder, man, because she, if she was just like, oh my God, you leave the toilet seat up all the time, I'm like, you're Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. You were supposed to go for 60 days and help out battered women, and yeah. you're shooting photos of you stabbing dudes in the metro station. Well, I've got community service is hard, Ralph. It really is. Yeah. But just fucking do it. Yeah, I that's, agree. I think that's the motto. Because she escaped. Like, she dodged a bullet, man. You imagine you dodge a bullet. You're going to put in your time on the, on the thing, the one thing they do throw your way. But instead... No. I don't think she gets it. No. Lindsay's, uh, Lindsay's buddy, Britney Spears, also in legal news this week. Her ex-bodyguard, Fernando Flores, has filed suit against Britney Spears. This is spectacular. He claims that she was abusive. She was a talentless cunt, yes, but she was also abusive. There was harassment involved, and it caused him, and I quote, anxiety, depression, and insomnia working for Britney Spears. He only worked for her for four months, by the way. He is suing her for $10 million. In the paperwork... He claims that consistently, Britney Spears, his boss, would chain smoke, fucking get over it, pass gas and pick her nose unapologetically, <laughs> refuse Wait, to bathe... are you supposed to apologize for that kind of thing? <laughs> I guess not if you're the boss. 
Uh, refused to bathe for days, didn't brush your teeth or use deodorant, he claims. His biggest problem was that Mr. Flores, and he used to be a police officer, he used to work for the police, he thought she was mentally unstable because she would insist that everyone on her staff call her either Queen Bee or Jennifer. Her lawyers are claiming that Mr. Flores is simply trying to sully Britney Spears' reputation. <laughs> yes, you don't want to sell your reputation as a white trash bad mother who walks barefoot in gas station bathrooms and eats Cheetos. <laughs> Fucking hell. Ten million dollars. That's, a, I mean, come on, man. At the end of the day, if you pass a little gas, you got to pay a bill now and shit like that. You can, you can say, oops, I did it again. <laughs> And if I'm working for her and I'm sitting in the car, man, I'm never giving her a lip. She farts, I'm like, hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> Madam, you're adding nothing to the show. No, she's adding real commentary. She literally, like, buttoned the bit with, she's very lucky. And she's right, she is kind of lucky. It's just, okay. Kim Kardashian also has filed a lawsuit against Old Navy because she's fucked her way through the new Navy. And it's, no, I'm sorry. No, she's suing Old Navy for 15 to $20 million in damages because they used a woman that Kim Kardashian claims looks identical to her. And by doing that in their commercials, they are trying to dupe the public into thinking that Kim was affiliated with Old Navy. Now, the woman's name is Melissa Molinaro. That's her name. She sang and danced in the commercials, the super cute series of commercials for Old Navy. I think we've got a photo of the two girls side by side. Nope. There we go. They are pretty similar. But there are a lot of differences. Uh, Melissa Molnero sang and danced in the commercials, which means that she has talent. I think in a court of law, you could prove that that is a substantial difference between the two of them. However, you have to admit there are some significant similarities, like the fact that I would like to put my penis inside both of them. I don't know if that'll hold up in court or not. I wonder if Kim Kardashian's lawsuit has anything to do with the fact of this small little fine print I read in the story that Melissa Molinaro, the other woman, just happens to be dating Kim's ex-boyfriend, Reggie Bush, as we speak. I changed my mind. I don't want to put my penis in both of them, quite frankly, because it would, uh, it would, after Reggie, it would just be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway, quite frankly. So I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> TV news, Charlie's Angels, big shakeup in the new Charlie's Angels. Robert Wagner was supposed to be the voice of Charlie on Charlie's Angels. He is out of that show. His representatives claim that he's got scheduling conflicts. Yeah because Robert Wagner's schedule is so fucking <laughs> packed. He's got all those geriatric insurance commercials to do. Uh, no word on who will be the new Charlie, but Robert Wagner has that. Yes, I would like to be Charlie. I'd... What voice would you do it in if you were Charlie? Would you oh just... my goodness! <laughs> Hello, angels, how are you? Today's client is Mr. David Stevenson. He's been robbed of all his money, don't you know? It's a shame. We need to go deep undercover and find out what's wrong. But remember, girls, life is for the living. <laughs> now that's a Charlie's Angels I'd watch. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, he's done talking, all those three chicks look at each other and they're like, why do we work for this man? <laughs> More TV news. Fran Drescher's new sitcom, Happily Divorced, is on. <laughs> I'm going to put a fucking hit out on you in about 20 minutes. You're brutal. Is, is there any guy there who's with that woman? Really? God bless you, sir. <laughs> there were a bunch of dudes that just stepped back. <laughs> like, no. No, not me. <laughs> Fran Drescher's got a new sitcom on TV land. It's called Happily Divorced. It's about, it's, a, it's based on the true story of her life where she was married to a guy for 20 years and then he came out and told her he was gay. If you listened to that voice for 20 years, wouldn't you start sucking cock too after the uh... I think it was fine until he was married to her and then it all went south. <laughs> I dig her voice, man. I'm like, ah. 
I'm Bobby Fleckman, oh. you know. The sex would sound like, ow. <laughs> oh my God. And that would be you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what she would sound like. Oh my God, your cock's so small. <laughs> ah. Anyway, TV Land, it's only been on for a couple weeks. TV Land's announced they've already renewed it for another season. So we've got more Fran Drescher to look forward to. Fran Drescher, like the clap, will be with us always. <laughs> Mila Kunis got asked to the Marine Corps ball by Sergeant Scott Moore. Let Marine... me guess, now they're married. No, no. Damn it. Marine Corporal Kelsey DeSantis asked Justin Timberlake to the Marine Corps ball. He said yes. So Sergeant Ray Lewis this week thought it'd be a good idea to put another invitation on YouTube to his favorite actress and ask her to the, U to the uh, Marine Corps ball. He asked Betty White to be his escort. I brought in a video of <laughs> Sergeant Ray Lewis asking Betty out, and I hope it plays. Poor James. It's coming, guys. All right. I would like to take Betty White. She's just funny. She's sweet. She's mature. She's the all-around perfect woman. I, I really think that we'd have a good time. I'm fun. You know, I'm going to be performing. Uh, I think I could make her laugh. I think she could make me laugh. I think we could laugh together. It's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be me and her at the Marine Corps Ball this year. I know it. So, call me. Call me. Call me. Yeah. Well, sadly, Betty White said no to Sergeant Ray Lewis. Betty said it's because he's black. What the? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I misread that. Betty said, I'm deeply flattered. I truly appreciate the invitation. Unfortunately, I cannot accept as I will be taping an episode of Hot in Cleveland. So Betty accepts a Cleveland steamer, but she won't go out with... She won't go out with Sergeant Ray Lewis. That fucking whore, Betty White. I, th I say thank God she put her foot down. There was a trend happening where every celebrity was getting invited to a prom, man. And Any guy bullshit. in a uniform would force a celebrity to do whatever they wanted. And I know what it would eventually lead to, me not getting asked, and that would hurt. Oh. Thanks. Walmart is celebrating the 15th anniversary of South Park. I didn't fucking stutter. Walmart is going to celebrate the 15th anniversary of South Park. They are introducing a new snack on their shelves called Cheesy Poofs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which, as you know, is Eric Cartman's favorite snack on the show. And if you've ever been to Walmart, you know the people in Walmart need more than anything more fucking snacks. What the fuck? I like going to Walmart just to buy snacks and shit, because you could buy, like, a garbage can full of Whoppers. <laughs> Because you never know when you're gonna have a Whopper party. Have you ever dunked your head into a garbage can full of Whoppers, Ralph, and just like, ah, it's fucking freedom, man. I cannot say I have. It's the taste of sweet freedom. Yes. <laughs> Here's a little New Jersey news for my buddy Kevin Smith, who of course is a New Jersey native. Bruce Springsteen, one of the most famous people to come out of New Jersey. Ah, has, the boss. Has a statue in his honor in Asbury Park, New Jersey for the birth of, uh, of the E Street Band. Local residents and Bruce fans call it a monstrosity. <laughs> Apparently the bust was created by an artist trained at Princeton University, and that makes people think that Princeton University doesn't know fuck all about teaching people art. The bronze bust is supposed to be Springsteen's head wearing a red bandana. I will show you the photo of it now, and you tell me if that's Bruce Springsteen wearing a red bandana. No, that's, that's Lurch <laughs> from the Adams Family. It looks like Colonel Kurtz, man. Gone up river. 
At best, it's the lead singer from Loverboy. <laughs> Apparently, no one is happy with it, except for the artist. Everyone else is upset, and they're planning on removing it soon. So, uh, he didn't even, what, Has he commented? Springsteen has not commented, no. But it's, other people are like, this sucks. Yeah, move it's it. horrible. And it's outside? Yeah, in Asbury Park. They need to move that to a secret garden. Take the bait. <laughs> nope, I'm better. <laughs> I'm drunker. All right, casting news. Dwight Yoakam's going to be the bad guy in Lone Ranger. All right, fair enough. He's going to be Butch Cavendish. Also added to the cast, Barry Pepper. He's going to play a, a cavalry captain named Captain Jay Fuller. And Helena Bonham Carter will play a crazy bitch who dresses funny. <laughs> No, she's going to play a madam who dresses funny. <laughs> who plays the Lone Ranger? Uh, Army Hammer. And then Tonto is Johnny Depp. That's right. All right. Reese Fons. He's in the news this week. He's joining the James Bond film, which right now is only called James Bond. <laughs> what a surprise. The loaded girl dropped her drink on some people. Be careful. Handle your fucking high. Yes. Reese Fonz is joining the James Bond film, which is right now only called Bond 23, but he is joining the cast. Javier Bardem and Ray Fiennes, apparently, are going to play the villains in the piece. No word on what Reese is going to play, but rumor has it he's going to be the new Q, the guy who outfits him with all the new gadgets and stuff. Oh, really? So they're finally going to add that element? Yes. Uh, I met Reese today. He's the lizard in the new Amazing Spider-Man movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did the panel today, and we showed a big chunk of lizard footage, and then we brought him out, and did I... Did they show footage of the lizard? Oh, yeah. Yes! You saw what the lizard looked like? Word. And? It's awesome. You didn't bring a fucking clip. Bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Sony was going to let me walk out with a clip yeah. from Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, how did it look? Compare it, it to something. Um... You know Killer Croc in the Batman comics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the lizard now vibe. Kay. As opposed to the traditional lizard, which looked like a lizard in a, in a lab coat. In a lab coat. Yeah. yeah. This is much more Killer Croc kind of vibe. And, and it's CGI'd, and, but it's really very cool done. Was he wearing purple pants or no? No. Kay. No, he is uh, he's full-blown monster. No, no pants whatsoever. They took his pants off? Yeah. <laughs> he's got a giant lizard cock. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like two tails, one in the front, one in the back. <laughs> So he's got, he's got like four leg table, man. He's just sitting there, right on. But Reese plays Kirk Connors with the gimpy arm and the whole nine yards, and it, yeah. was, it was very cool. And I said, you know, we brought him out late because everyone else was introduced. And by the way, Andrew Garfield, the sweetest guy on the planet. He couldn't have been nicer. Emma Stone, as I mentioned, had no fucking idea who I was. <laughs> and then uh, Reese came out, and I said, well, he's late to the game. I want to try to include him, give him his moment in the panel, try to you know introduce him to the crowd and stuff. So I said. Uh, Reese, as an actor, how do you bring humanity to a monster? Because you play a monster in this film. And I don't know whether he was high or drunk or didn't like me, but he said, um, you don't bring humanity to monsters. Monsters bring humanity to us. And I said, either he is the deepest motherfucker I've ever met, or he wants me to not ask him any more questions. So I erred on the side of caution. I uh, did a panel today uh, with William Shatner. Ah. Oh. Yes. Oh. This morning, uh, I did a panel. Uh, he directed a documentary called The Captains, which actually airs tonight on Epics. And it's uh, him talking to everybody who was ever a captain on one of the uh, ships in the Starfleet on, over the many Star Trek shows. Right. Charming as fuck. They, I've seen it, and they showed clips in the hall. Really, really cool. But on the panel... I got to um, play with him. He's fun. Like, uh, William Shatner is a... a Very kind of, sharp at 80. Is he 80 years yes, old? Yes, 80. Are you shitting me? No, he is 80 years old. Really? Yes. I, dude, I didn't know he was 80. It's He's fucking really sharp. Yeah. But I was, uh, at one point during the panel, I got to uh, fucking call double dumbass on you. <laughs> <laughs> and for a guy who was a big fan of that Star Trek movie, it was fucking huge. It was fun. It was That's really awesome. neat. Yeah. Liam Neeson's in the news. He was cast in a new movie. <laughs> Two Liam's parts, I imagine, right? 
He's his own co-star. Trying to do hard news here, man. You're making jokes. You ain't getting the news gonna be hard, and when it gets hard, oh. look out. Gilligan will never get off his island. <laughs> Liam Neeson is going to a new movie called The Gray, where he will play the leader of a bunch of steel-tough oil drillers. <laughs> Come on, grow up! <laughs> How's he getting to that oil, Ralph? He's going to drill with a big drill bit. <laughs> they crash land. His crew crash lands in the Alaskan wilderness on their way to a job to the Alaskan pipeline. Mm. Apparently, uh, the crew has Alaskan to... Alaskan pipeline is real long, isn't it, Ralph? <laughs> real long and big and phallic. Like, oh, I don't know. Liam Neeson's cock. <laughs> The crew has to fight to survive in the Alaskan wilderness when they have a face-to-face -face meeting with a wild Sarah Palin. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. No, apparently it's about their survival for battle. Uh, apparently uh, they start to starve and so they just cut off small pieces of his cock and eat it. <laughs> they live for 17 years in the wilderness <laughs> feasting on his cock. Is that what you people want? <laughs> Hey, it's Geek News Time! Yeah! Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kev. Geek News. I figure if ever we could ex do an extended Geek News, it would be this week. Oh my God, we're in Geek News Haven. Biggest Geek News of the week was the success of Deathly Hallows 2, the uh, Harry Potter movie. It's breaking all kinds of fucking records. Uh, $168 million in its opening weekend, biggest opening weekend ever in North America. Uh, total take around the world, half a billion dollars in its opening weekend. It, it, I'm sorry, did we upset you, sir? I, just... I didn't like the film, I'm walking out. <laughs> Speaking of which, Warner Brothers is so happy with J.K. Rowling, who really had fuck all to do with the movies, in my opinion. I mean, she wrote the book, she created the character, but she wasn't like... She didn't direct them or anything. Yeah, she wrote the book, created the characters, but she didn't do fuck all for those movies. Well, she didn't make the movies. <laughs> um, yeah, she was, she, she was all over that shit, man. She deserves all the credit for that. Well, she deserves more than credit. Warner Brothers, to thank her, the yeah, CEO yeah. of Warner Brothers, Barry Meyer, wanted to buy her a nice gift, so he picked up an antique white gold bracelet featuring 40 large diamonds that was worth millions of dollars, they claim. That's gonna cut into that half a billion dollar take they had this weekend. Um, she was said it was very, it was a very gracious gift, JK said. And she accepted it? She did. She's yeah. like, fuck yes. <laughs> they gave you a bracelet for cop out, didn't they? Didn't they? <laughs> yeah, really. They put me in bracelets. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe, speaking of Harry Potter, said he'd like to go back and revisit the series in 50 years when they're rebooting it. Like they're gonna wait 50 years. Yeah, really, man. He said he'd like to take a shot at Dumbledore. He'd like to play Dumbledore next time he goes into that world. So this time he can molest the children instead of being molested. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, like Dumbledore wasn't fucking just grabbing those kids left and right. Come on, wake up, people. It's implicit. There's a subtext. Magic wands? Hello? <laughs> Forgeticus indeed, sir. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. More Harry Potter chatter. Lord Voldemort. Oh, I'm sorry. The one who shall not be named. <laughs> Rafe Fiennes. Don't get me fucking started on this motherfucker. Rafe Fiennes. He so Fiennes. Why don't you like him? Spell Rafe for me in this story. Ralph. R-A-L-P-H. Yeah. It's fucking Ralph. That's what it is. Don't. Oh, no. Don't call me Ralph. Call me Rafe. Rafe no. Garman. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just call you Rape. How about that? <laughs> just making up names now. Make up anything. Call me Steve. My name that is, is T, T I M. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's ashamed of Ralph. That's his problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's something he should be ashamed of. He said during the filming, he used to wear a garter belt under his robes as Voldemort because the tights kept slipping. That makes him a little less sinister, doesn't it? Knowing he's wearing women's underwear underneath those robes. <laughs> the tights kept dropping between my thighs. It made it very hard for me to walk with any kind of dignity. So you put on a garter belt to preserve your dignity. 
He, you know uh, what? We don't want you, Rafe. We don't, the Ralphs don't want you anymore. That's what we've decided. You kicked him out of the Ralph Club? Boom. It just happened. He's like, I'm in my own club, Club Rafe. Emma Watson of Harry Potter, she's in talks to play the female lead in Guillermo del Toro's new uh, Beauty and the Beast. He's doing a take on that. No word yet on who will play the Beast. However, uh, producers are talking to Chelsea Handler. She's too hideous. Speaking of Chelsea Handler, I want to thank the person who sent in the video. They were anonymous. I can't thank them by name, but they were anonymous, and they have uh, sent me a video. Apparently, there's a video game out there where you, it's a wrestling video game, and you can create your own characters in the game. And someone put together a, 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 a wrestling match between myself and Chelsea Handler. So I, again, it's a crapshoot, but I brought in the video of us uh, battling. It's in two parts. One is us just fighting it out. And then another one, apparently they gave me some superpower in the second half of the fight that I use on her. And I wanted to show it to you because I think it's pretty impressive. I think we have the video of that, of me battling Chelsea Handler in the wrestling ring. If I were to... to... I think that's it right there, isn't that? <laughs> There we go. It's called Ralph versus the Talentless Cunt. Here we are. It's the video game. Oh, that's good. That's a drop kick. Oh, she's got no shot. Yeah. Side kick, roundhouse. Got her in a headlock. Oh, that's got to hurt. Yeah, I want to get her up again. Oh, donkey punch. That's not the first donkey punch he's ever had. Well, here's my superpower. Jack Daniels breath. Jack Daniels breath, here it comes. Ah, there we go. Knock her out with the jack breath. God bless. All right, we're running out of time, so let's, uh, let's just do what we do at the end of every show here in Hollywood Babylon. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Just got the sign that uh, they're, they're shining us off, so it's time to get to the question we ask at the end of every Hollywood what Babylon. What question is that, Rafe? How? <laughs> Why you, I oughta? How big is Liam Neeson's cock? There's usually a fucking theme song. How big is Liam Neeson's cock? No, wait, James, one more time, because <laughs> thank you. Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock. I really shouldn't drink uh, during the show. Yeah, good move, sir. Kevin, would you hold me? <laughs> It'll all be over soon. Uh, no, man, we like the hiccups and bumps are part of life, part of the show, and I, everyone's used to accustomed to that as well. Liam Neeson's cock, you can go to neesoncock.com if you'd like to write your own jokes and add them to the list. We take a look at the list every week and we pick out our favorites. These are some of them. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, there are three Starbucks between the base and the tip. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he's actually the sausage king of Chicago, not Abe Froman. <laughs> I should say you do. By the way, I met uh, Nicolas Cage today. The, the, uh, the Ghost Rider, the second Ghost Rider movie was part of my panel. You met him? Did you yeah. do your Nick I Cage? I did. But I was like, Nick, uh, big fan. I just want to say I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Oh, right, thanks. He totally did it. Totally did Thurston Howell on me. It awesome. really is a little yeah. bit of Thurston yeah, Howell right there. Neeson's cock is so big, he doesn't have a star in the Walk of Fame. His cock has its own Walk of Fame. Oh. Liam Neeson's cock is so big that every woman he fucks gets to walk a red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, the space shuttle was decommissioned because it's more cost-effective to toss a crew onto Liam Neeson's cock and wait for him to have an erection and catapult <laughs> him into orbit. 
Liam Neeson's cock is so big that they've renamed the pro wrestling moves to the half Neeson and the full Neeson. <laughs> Trust me, you never want the full Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that the only things big enough to him to, for him to fuck and not tear are the plot holes in a Transformer movie. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big you should never stand near it during electrical storms. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big the Italians made a small scale model of it. The Liam Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, when he finishes having sex, polar bears drown due to the retreating surface area. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that to keep it from destroying Earth, the crew of the USS Enterprise had to travel back to 1987 San Francisco <laughs> to find another one to communicate with it. <laughs> Double dumbass on you. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that it once made Gloria Stein and put on an apron and make him a sandwich. <laughs> a Gloria Steinem joke. I, that, yeah, that's yeah, bold in 2011. Z zapped here from the 70s. Liam Neeson's cock is so big that if you give him a blowjob, you will wind up with Schindler's Lisp. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it gives women lightning bolt scars right above their cooter. <laughs> Props just for working cooter into a joke, by the way. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, Khloe Kardashian planks on it. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that it went on a diet and lost significant amount of weight to start a new action comedy. Wow, man, that's an esoteric Hollywood joke. Liam Neeson's cock is so big that Carly Simon wrote a song for it. You're so veiny. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that his biggest box office success was the time he turned a woman's box into the size of a small office. <laughs> <laughs> that was it? That was your last one? That was it. Usually rap with, uh, uh, and the finally Liam Neeson's cock. I thought there was one more to go. I'm unprepared. It's like you came before I did. I'm sorry. Make one up, quick. Okay. Uh, and finally, Liam Neeson's cock is so big that if you give him a blowjob, you wind up with Schindler's Lisp. <laughs> <laughs> Seems familiar. Did you guys have a good time tonight? Thank you for being our first road Thank show, man. You so Thanks much. for showing up in droves like this. Thanks for listening every week. We really uh, appreciate it. It's, it's been a blast so far. And with, the, with you guys behind us, man, there's no telling uh, where we can go. Uh, and we're going someplace with the show soon. So thank you for listening. All you guys tuning in, telling other people about the show, spreading the word, is really helping it grow into something else, which we'll be able to tell you about very, very soon. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for being here with us every week. That's Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck on, Comic Con. Good night. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Hollywood Babylon.